I just want to look at the Word of God for a few moments. Um, I want to do a couple of things. I want to look at the Word of God. I asked my wife, her and Sister Tiffany would sing again. They did a great job this morning. They practiced a lot on that. And so it was just great. I appreciate that. And then I want to have communion tonight. Praise God. And just, uh, I just want it to be a very, just a time of us and God together. Amen. And then I just want it to be a time of prayer, a time of thinking about what Christ has done. Brother David, I appreciate those words tonight. They've radiated with me. Just about what we can do for the kingdom of God. Amen. I believe that we are making an impact, but I want our impact to be greater. And I think sometimes as we learn to utilize our resources, as we grow, we're able to do that. Like I said, this morning was just, for me, a phenomenal day thus far. I think just a real time of celebration. Amen. And so uh, it's, it's just, I, I, I love where we are. Uh, just longing for more, but I'm thankful for where we are. We have wonderful people in our church, and just we couldn't ask for for anything better. And so, just this weekend, just of all the folks working together, things done was a fresh reminder how blessed that we are. How blessed, and I appreciate the text and all the kind words and things, encouragement throughout a busy weekend. Amen. Uh, one that we just celebrate Jesus. I have to tell you. Uh, Yesterday when we get to the kids' story, sometimes there can be a lot of, you know, they're kids and they're different ages and young. But Brother David, it was just undivided attention. It was just phenomenal. The attention of undividedness and uh, the participation. And I don't know where Alexia is, but I'm telling you what, she impressed me immensely yesterday as she shared the, the, the story. And it was just phenomenal. And Sister Dot had made me a whole carton full of resurrection eggs to use. And I have to tell you, yours was better than the ones I bought. And I, I like that. It was great. So thank you. Turn with me tonight to 1 Corinthians chapter number 15. 1 Corinthians chapter number 15. And I want to look at Paul's hypothesis. I want to think about this for a minute. Did you ever just stop and think about something? Like, this is the Word of God. I just want us to think about this for a minute tonight. And then I want us to look at how that Paul's hypothesis that he gives us, and it's just strictly a, a, a think about statement that he gives, right? Did you ever have someone say, think about this? What if? And it makes the wheels in your brain start turning and you think about it. And that's what Paul does right here. He says in, in verse number 14, And if Christ be not risen from the dead, then our preaching is, is vain. Your faith is also vain. Yea, and when we are found false witnesses of God, because we have testified of God that is raped, that that, 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 raped, that He raised up Christ, whom He raised not up, if He be not uh, uh, that from the dead, that the dead raised not, uh, for it is for if He died. For if the dead raise not, sorry, that it is not Christ raised. And if Christ be not raised, your faith is vain. And ye are yet in your sins. Then they also which are fallen asleep in Christ are perished. If in this life only we have hope in Christ, we are of all men most miserable. I want us to think about that. If Christ had not risen, amen, we know that he's risen, but let's think for a moment that if he had not been raised from the dead. I mean, coming out this morning, I don't know about how you are, but I noticed in my drive this morning the beauty of spring and just uh, the sun. I noticed uh, the flowers. I noticed the trees. I was thinking, Brother David, this morning, uh, reflective of, of Christ being uh, risen from the grave and the beauty in that moment. How that uh, the, the spring, it, it takes away all death. It takes away all drabness. It takes away all, all thoughts of coldness. Uh, but we have 
have great things lying ahead of us. Hey, that is Easter. Amen. And, and, but, but what if there was no being raised from the dead? What would it be like? What a horrible hypothesis Paul uh, uh, just gives us. What if? What if? What if the stone had not been rolled away? What if? I want us to think about it. Our government would be different. The Bible says in Isaiah chapter 9, verse number 6, the government is upon his shoulders. Everything about uh, where we are would be totally different. Think about this. When you wrote your check, you would write your check and you would date it 2772 instead of 2019. There would be no divide in, 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 in the chism of AD and, 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 and BC. There would, be, there would be no divide. It would just be, be, be complete. But, but so no birth of Christ. There would be no change. No change at all. Our timeline would be different. Think about how that it would affect our citizenship. Brother Josh, I'm not a, a huge scholar of history, but this I know, that they sought out for a, a land in which they could worship God, Brother Justin, freely. So that's why they came to America. What would it be like? And, and, and really, what would it be like even in our worship today? We come and we raise our hands and we worship Brother Dennis, our risen Savior who's in the world today. I know that He is living. No matter what men say, we would come here and we would celebrate spring and spring equinox. And maybe we would, we would worship our, our mother our goodness or our mother world. Our worship would be totally different because we wouldn't be worshiping a risen Savior. Had he not risen, it would affect the world. I want you to think about how the world was culturally and morally, even when Christ came. Do you know that the morality uh, 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 that is in the world today is consistent with the Word of God? It's consistent with the life of Christ. We are still making a difference. Thank God that we as Christians can still go to the polls and vote. Thank God for parents that raised us in a godly way and changed us. Brother John, I need to tell you, someone said to me this week, i got to tell you, thanks, your church has really changed John. And he's different. And I said, no, 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 it's not our church. It's God. God has changed John. And so folks are seeing that John. Amen. I don't know any different. I think you're just a great guy. You always have been. But, 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 but Christ has got in there. And so the morality of us, amen, it changed. Where would the morality of the world be? Where would we be at today? If it were not for Christ. <laughs> Amen. Just suppose that Christ had not risen. We would, we would lose. Paul said, he said, our preaching is in vain. The value of the gospel. Do you know what the word gospel means? It means good news. There would be no good news. Brother David, you said up here, challenge my heart. Amen. By the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ. But I wouldn't have the challenge of, uh, 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 of the good news. Of the predominant theme. And as you come into the book of Acts, Brother David read part of that. But you continue on. We, we, we read a message of, have you heard about Jesus? Amen. Have you, have you heard about Him crucified and Him being risen? That's the good news that is preached. Amen. And the importance of knowing Him as your Savior. Amen. The good news of Jesus Christ wouldn't be changing lives and wouldn't be instilling hope. We would lose our faith. Amen. He, he, he goes on down to say uh, that, that uh, uh, our, our, our faith is also in vain. In verse number 14, amen, we look at Hebrews chapter number 13 and we see the hollow of the faithful. Amen. But we would, we would look at it would just be a hollow of the foolish people who trusted in a God who was not, but because He is risen, we have value in our faith. Think about this, that Job's confidence was that when his in his flesh that he would see God. 
That was the faith that he exercised even from the very commencement, the early years of time. He had faith that he would see God. His faith would have been foolishness if Christ had not risen. Meaningless. It would be a, a flight of just uh, of, of just fruit, uh, fertility. Uh, it would be empty. It would be in vain. It would be worthless. We would lose our credibility because we'd be preaching about a God who had no power. But because He was resurrected. Think about a road to a mass where our hearts did burn within us. Think about a Damascus road where, he, where, 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 where the apostle, amen, he met a risen Savior and his life was changed. Amen. If there was no gospel, amen, there would be no credibility. There would be no fruit. Amen. There would be no joy. There would be no happily ever after. But because of Christ's resurrection, he has imputed in us, amen, that where I go there, you will be also. Amen. There is a joy and there is a happiness, a happiness happily ever after. There would be no fruit of a happy ending. We would lose forgiveness. Think about what it would mean for Him to die upon the cross. Amen. He would take on sin, but He would not come forth as a risen Savior. Amen. There would be no forgiveness. We would be walking around. Amen. In our sin and in our guilt, hopeless and helpless if there was no risen Savior. We would be desiring forgiveness. All of us would be going out. We would be buying uh, animals to sacrifice, goats and sheep and bullocks that would simply cover our sins and appease God, but never forgive us of our sins. If Christ had not risen. And then Paul goes on to talk about this. He talks about those who've fallen asleep in the Lord. That there is a hope. I don't know about you. If you've ever been to a funeral where someone doesn't know the Lord, it's heartbreaking. Even if there's an uncertainty and you're, you can still be hopeful, it's those balances are difficult. But when you go to a funeral and say, we just celebrated your mom's. And what hope that was there. You know why? Because Christ is risen. Amen. Amen. Because Christ is risen. There is a hope. Amen. Because Paul said, listen, amen. For the believer, you don't sorrow as others and you don't weep as others that weep and you don't grieve as others that grieve. Amen. We know that death is, is only a brief separation. Only, only a, a momentary, a, a little bit of time until we see them again. We would lose our purpose. Jesus said this. He said, because I live, you shall also live in John 14, 19. He talked about abundant life and eternal life. Amen. Our purpose, amen, is Christ. And if we do not have Christ, we would be of all men most miserable. But praise God, we have a risen Savior. And that's why we're here today. Amen. This is what today is all about. Yes, it's nice to have a nice meal. Thank God for a nice ham dinner. I enjoy that. Amen. Thank God for, 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 for the get-togethers and things that we do and family and all the neat things about Easter. But the greatest thing of Easter is this, is that we serve a risen Savior. He's in the world today. Amen. And we should have great confidence. Amen. We shouldn't even whimper a doubt because we know that He is risen. Amen. We've got to proclaim our faith that Christ is risen indeed. Amen. Amen. I want to share. Share told you the things that would happen if Christ had not risen. But let's talk about some quick proofs of why He is risen. 
Jesus said in Matthew 12, 40, he says, Jonas was three days and three nights in the well's belly, so shall the Son of Man be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. He said in Matthew 20, 19, and shall deliver him to the Gentiles to mock and scourge and crucify him. And on the third day he shall rise again. John chapter 2 verse number 19. Jesus answered and said unto them, destroy this temple and in three days I will raise it up. Amen. Brother Eli, we know God keeps every word he says, doesn't he? Amen. And so the proof of the resurrection, amen, is that God keeps his word. He said it and he delivers. I like when you can trust someone, don't you? I like when someone tells me something. They're not evading the facts. They're not running around the bush. They're not just giving me enough information to satisfy because they don't give you the full picture. Amen. But 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 cutting the chase. Amen. These are the facts. Though David, you said, uh, and the rest of the story is, he said that he'll rise again. And he did. The tomb was empty. His friends, his friends said it was empty. Now hold on to your seats. And his enemy said it was empty. Amen. Right. The stone was rolled away that was sealed there. The Romans guards that, 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 that tried to protect it from the thieves. Amen. They saw that the stone was rolled away. They dropped. Amen. The power of God dropped them. Can, Brother Josh, he showed me some pictures of things that happened in their house with electricity. It was powerful. It was crazy. Unbelievable. And so I reflected on that and I thought, can you imagine what power was in that tomb? Can you imagine the power that's in the tomb? The Holy Ghost, that same Spirit that raised Christ up from the dead, the Bible says that if He dwell in you, He shall quicken or bring to life your mortal bodies. Amen. We think about electricity. We think about the power. It's unfathomable, though the damage, the work that it can do. But can you imagine the power of God? Amen. And the electricity is nothing compared to the power of God and the power that went in that tomb. Amen and broke that shield and rolled that stone back and raised Jesus from the day and grave. Amen. And did it in such a way that those who come in with such forensic ability, amen, there was no denying that this is where Jesus was laid, but He is not here any longer. Amen. They came to bring spices. Amen. Those spices couldn't cover up their grief. Amen. But when they came, their grief broke away in joy as they saw they had a risen Savior. He kept His word. The tomb is empty. And then Jesus goes, Brother David, not just to His disciples, Amen, but He goes to 14 different groups. We can see the Word of God. He goes and He shows Himself to over 500 people. Amen. They weren't dreaming. He ate with them. They touched Him. He was raised from the dead. He is alive. Amen. It's not if Christ be not risen. The infallible evidence is that He is risen. And then we see that those who saw him, they acted on their disbelief. Why would Peter, this timid man, this man who backed out, denied the Lord three times, all of a sudden his life is radically changed. And he preaches the gospel of a risen Savior. Because he lives. He lives. The church was born out of it. Amen. Jesus rose from the dead. Amen. His rising from the dead birthed something that is so phenomenal. And that is the church of Jesus Christ. And the church will still weather every storm. And the church will still go on. You know why? Because we serve our risen Savior. I want to conclude it all by saying this. Paul gave the hypothesis. He gave it from David. And I love this. I've thought about this this Easter. Christ, Brother Justin, could have been risen from the grave without the stone ever being rolled back. But then he could have done that. 
Because it just came forth. I mean, he walked in a room where the windows and the doors were shut and he came in and he presented himself unto them. He didn't need that stone, Sister Dot, to be rolled back. You know why he rolled the stone back? It wasn't just an exit for him. But it was an entrance for us to come and experience a risen Savior. Yeah. Amen. Amen. That's why the stone is rolled back. Because you and I can experience a risen Savior. He is in the world today. Come and see. Come and see. I'm glad I serve. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He's alive. Alive forever. Paul, thank you for the hypothesis that makes me question if he had not been risen. These are the things that would be. But Jesus, thank you for the evidence that you're alive and you're alive. Amen. Sister Holly would come and Sister Tiffany. I wonder tonight as they sing, as we're getting ready for communion. Amen. Could we just take time to worship tonight? Amen. What a name. The angel said to Mary and Joseph, Thou shalt call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. There is no other name. I think about this. We live in a world where people get hurt. I look tonight at my girls, Bella and Brindley, and I would do anything to insulate them from hurt. I look at you, Ellie, and I would insulate you if I could with everything that's within my being. But I can't. I can't. We all know what life can do to folks. But there's one who can. He can insulate us, but he can also be there. That by the day when we're hurt, we can run to him. When we're broken, we can run to him. Amen. Because he has a name. It's a high tower. We can all run into and be safe. Let's worship the Lord together tonight.